Dear viewers, there is a lot of confusion with respect to taxation on repatriation of funds from India post 1st of July 2023. Lots of videos are circulating. There are many TikTok videos. There are many reels which have been produced under that. The NRA community is under a confusion. Is it really that the NRA gets taxed because of this law provision? Let's find out an answer for this particular problem with the expert of the week, Chartered Accountant Sri Ram Ra. This is NRA Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, when there is a confusion in your minds with respect to taxation, who can be a better person to answer this other than my eminent faculty member, Chartered Accountant Sri Ramra? He is not new to you. You have seen him in many multiple videos and he has simplified the tax codes for the NRIs uh, spread across the globe. Today I have requested him to brief you on what exactly is this TCS on repatriation of funds. Are NRIs are liable to pay taxes against this? Who has to pay? How much has to pay? What was there before? What has changed? All these aspects I am going to discuss in this video. Please stay till the end of this video. Every point that we are going to discuss here is a very, very important thing for you to know about. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sri Ram Rao. Thank you. Mr. Sri Ram, as I said, there is so much of a confusion in the minds of general public, both in India and outside of India, the NRA community, about the taxes that have to be paid on repatriation after 1st of July 2023. Now, let's discuss this issue threadbare and find out finer points of what does the law say? The first question that I'm going to ask you is, is it applicable to the NRIs? What do you have to say when you read through the amendments that have come in? At the outset, let me clarify specifically from the point of view of this video, a few things which are very important uh, things to be understood. Whenever in this video in particular, if I say an NRI, it will refer to every person being a person resident outside of India under as per the FEMA regulations, Foreign Exchange Management Act regulations and it will also include OCS and every such NRI can maintain only NRO, NRE and FCNR type of bank accounts either savings bank account under these schemes or deposit bank accounts and such NRIs cannot maintain normal resident savings bank account or deposits. So, these are the few final points which one need to understand before I jump into providing answer to your query. Your query is specifically from the point of view of the fact that whether this TCS on repatriation would it be applicable to a non-resident. Now, let me clarify from the point of view of the provisions of Income Tax Act that is 206C subsection 1G which provides for applicability of TCS on repatriation of funds. Now, coming to this, so if the three conditions which I am going to mention now, if they are cumulatively satisfied, then TCS would apply under this provision. Those three conditions are very simple. One, a person being a resident individual. Two, who purchases foreign currency from an AD banker. Three, who is repatriating such foreign currency which is purchased to a person or country outside of India under liberalized remittance scheme that is LRS. If all these three conditions are satisfied, then there will be applicability of TCS under section 206C 1G of the Income Tax Act. And let me provide you, tell you that this provision has been introduced in the law about two years back. Now, there has been some amendment in this provision. Mr. Sriram, I heard you. You are categorical to say it applies for a resident individual and it is not applicable to NRIs. NRIs cannot use liberalized remittance scheme. For NRIs to repatriate the money, the applicable scheme is $1 million scheme. So you say this TCS has been imposed only for LRS repatriation which is applicable only for resident which means the entire NRI community is out of it. Am I right or wrong? 
Yes, you are definitely right. When a NRI repatriates funds, TCS will not apply to him because TCS will apply only when a funds are repatriated under LRS. And such LRS scheme is applicable only when a resident individual repatriates funds from India. That's it. Right. There is one problem area which I will tell you. We have discussed this in earlier videos also. In spite of we doing so many videos and educating the NRIs across globe with what they should do and what they should not do with respect to bank accounts, many of the NRIs have got the savings bank account which is meant for resident individuals. If an NRI tries to repatriate money from these SB accounts which they have maintained in India, what might happen? See, first of all, as I have been uh, telling, non-resident cannot maintain resident accounts. So, resident savings bank or deposit account, they cannot maintain. So, if they maintain that, that itself is a violation of FEMA. Now, over and above that, if you are trying to repatriate from these accounts to your foreign bank account under LRS, then that is again a violation. So, there will be multiple violations done by you. So, the best possible way for them to uh, do is, you know, convert these uh, resident accounts to NR account and after that repatriate funds. So, they should not even try to repatriate funds from their resident accounts outside of India. If they want to repatriate those funds, then first they have to convert those funds into a NRO account, type of account. From there, they, they can repatriate. Uh, thank you, Sri Ram. Dear viewers, if you are an NRA who is watching this program, if you are still maintaining the savings bank account, which is meant for resident Indians, please do take care and see that at the earliest possible time, you convert these into NRO. Holding an SB account when you are an NRA is a violation of FEMA law and FEMA law has stringent penalties with it. We have done detailed videos on FEMA laws. You can check through the playlist on taxation on this video. You will find these videos. Our colleague Mr. Dhanush Bolar has done detailed videos on FEMA law violations. What might go wrong? How much is the penalty? Uh, and if you watch these videos for a moment, you will start shivering. Should, should I take so much of a risk? So don't take that risk. Try to close these accounts or get them converted into an RO. Uh, Mr. Shriram, I'll come to another side of this story. Now the word TCS is equated to tax. People say, I have to pay 20% tax. Is TCS the tax that has to be paid? What is TCS? Is the money that is paid to the government under TCS is gone or is there a recourse for a person who is paying this TCS to claim back this amount? The TCS, I mean the full name, uh, full name what we can say is tax collected source. So, which is similar to tax deducted source. Okay, see this is nothing but a preventive base of taxation or collection of taxes in advance. So, if I am being a resident, want to transfer from uh, funds outside of India, then from me, when I am purchasing the foreign currency, the AD banker will collect additionally 5% or 20% as the case may be, whatever it is, we will discuss later. That percentage of taxes at source, he will collect TCS, then deposit on behalf of me to the government account as an income tax. So, when I am filing my tax returns this year, then I can claim it as a TCS paid, that is tax paid in advance and offset against whatever my tax liability and if any excess tax is there, which is already collected, then I will get the refund of it. So, this is how the procedure goes as far as uh, TCS is concerned, which is similar to TDS. Right, right. Dear viewers, please uh, keep this in mind. TCS or the tax collected at source is not the final taxation. It does not mean that you have to pay 20% taxes. It is a tax evasion prevention mechanism which has been put in place. The government feels that you have to pay taxes. So it collects that money in advance. When you file the tax returns, you can claim this back in case if you are not liable to pay those 
taxes. It is as simple as that. This is not something which has come into existence today or yesterday. Uh, world over this practice is existent, if not for repatriation of money, but for various uh, Tra financial transactions. When you buy a car in India, you have to do the TCS. When you are paid salaries, TDS happens. Uh, when the, the vendor's bills gets paid in the companies, there is a TDS which happens, which is a normal mechanism. But this is not the final taxes. Nobody should feel or take into account that my costings will go up by 20% because of this measure. No, you are liable to tax as per your slab rate. What is the slab rate? How much you have to pay the taxes? Depends on your income in India. And when you file the tax return, that is the time you will come to know about it. If you are not liable to pay taxes, you can claim back. If you have to pay a higher slab rate, you are required to pay the balanced taxes. Is my uh, statement correct, Mr. Sriram? Yes, you are absolutely right. So it is only an taxes paid in advance. We can always claim it back. If you are not ever, not ever, not at all liable for uh, filing return of income. Meaning thereby, if your you know income is less than the threshold limit, even then you can claim all these taxes as you know refund by filing a return of income. That's it. You know, new return of income you can file and uh, claim back uh, the entire TCS uh, which has been deducted or collected in advance. Uh, Mr. Sriram, now we have understood this part. Uh, now, when the government brought the amendments, are there any exceptions or is it a blanket? TCS of 20% for any purpose, irrespective of any specific exemptions or anything, or there is more fine print in it. What was there before and from what is that is going to be implemented from 1st of July 2023? See, um, actually, to answer this, I can you know categorize these uh, item wise into four different uh, items. The first one being if and uh, resident individual transfers money outside of India under LRS then for the purpose of education okay and for this purpose of education of their or himself or his children whatever it is a loan education loan has been taken from a financial institution okay so if this being the case I have taken an education loan and that fund I am repatriating outside of India then there will be a TCS of 0.5% of the amount if the aggregate remittance outside of India exceeds 7 lakhs in a financial year. This is the position as on date and also in future after 1st of July 2023 because whatever the Finance Act you know, made an amendment will be applicable only from 1st of July 2023. So up to 30th of June whatever there can be a case that you know up to 30th of June 2023 one rate after 30th of June, that is from 1st July, there will be one rate. However, as far as a situation is concerned where a repatriation is being done for the purpose of education, out of an education loan taken from a financial institution, then TCS will apply at 0.5% if the aggregate of tra transfer outside of India exceeds 7 lakhs in a financial year, 7 lakh rupees in a financial year. That has not changed, that will not going to change. Okay. Second category, apart from this education you know, uh, purpose taken out of education loan, it, there can be a situation, a person is repatriating funds out of his own money towards education. Okay. Or for any purpose of education or for the medical treatment of a ill person. At this point of time, the TCS rate will apply at 5% of the amount being repatriated outside of India if aggregate of remittance exceeds 7 lakh rupees in the financial year. This position also has not changed. This position will be the same up to 30th of June and also from 1st of July 2023. The rate is 5%. If loan is taken for education purpose, then 0.5%. If loan is not taken for education purpose, or the transfer is for the medical purpose of an individual, medical treatment, then 5% of the amount being transferred. So, this is the first two categories which I was discussing. Then the third category, uh, when a person pays for overseas tour package and this payment um, does not, you know, pertain to even, uh, this will be applicable only even if the payment is done 
not under LRS, otherwise also. So, if a payment is being made for overseas tour packages, then as on date up to 30th of June 2023, the rate of TCS is 5% without any threshold. That means even if 1 rupee is paid for a tour, tour uh, package, then 5% TCS will be collected. That is up to 30th of June. After 30th of June, this rate will jump up to 20% without any threshold. So, the rate has been increased from 5 to 20%. There is no other change. Now, apart from these three categories, whatever I have told, any other remittance is being made by a resident individual under LRS, then up to 30th of June 2023, TCS will apply at 5% if the amount of remittance exceeds rupees 7 lakhs in a financial year. This position is up to 30th of June 2023. After 30th of June 2023, that is from 1st of July 2023, there is no threshold and the rate of TCS will increase from 5 to 20 percent. That's it. So it's as simple as that. So it in effect, it has changed only for two categories of payment. If a person, is, if a resident individual is going out on a vacation outside, the, his uh, TCS will be 20%. And if you are transferring money uh, for any other purpose under LRS, uh, then irrespective of the threshold, the TCS will jump to 20%. Uh, but right. the first two categories of if you are going for education purpose, be it with an education loan or with your own uh, funds or if you are going abroad for the sake of medical treatment, whatever that was prevalent before, the same thing would continue. Yes, absolutely right. Mr. Sriram, thank you very much for these inputs. I am very sure the viewers who watch this video the, uh, fully will understand that there is not a great deal of change which has happened except for two category of people. So there is no need to be confused. NRI community does not need to go through that anxious period and try to you know repatriate money in a hurry. It just does not apply to you. It does not apply to NRO. It does not apply to your NRE account. It does not apply to your FCNR account. You are nowhere being touched for whatever purpose under this particular tax provision. For you, the status quo, whatever that was there before, still continues. Dear viewers, hope the video that I have done today would put to rest all the confusion that was there in the minds of NRA community regarding the TCS, the tax collected at source, on repatriation of money. If it did help you to understand all the finer points of this particular provision, do like this video. Don't forget to share this video in all the WhatsApp groups where you are included. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you next week with yet another expert with yet another useful topic for you. Till then, stay safe. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.